Hey everybody, I'm Marie Bard Curtis of The Quilted Poodle. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a panograph quickly in QCT5 using Power Panto. It's really as easy as one, two, three. Join me. As you can see, I'm using QCT5 Professional for Juki. We're going to begin by touching Pantograph. You will be prompted to set your safe area, so move your machine to the top left to a space just to the left of your quilting area and to the very top. Press the button, then you're prompted to move your machine to the bottom right just outside of your quilting area and all the way forward and then press that button. You have successfully set your safe area. When setting your safe area, you can only put in a number as big as your quiltable space or your safe area and correct that when I get into the Panto stacker screen. I can put in the actual length of my quilt. Additionally, I add an inch to the length and an inch to the width so I can quilt off the top and bottom of my quilt as well as quilt off both sides. All of those edges will be caught up in the binding so you never notice it. Now what we're going to do is measure the actual width of our quilt and we're going to use the measuring tool at the top of the screen. Click on that. I'm going to move the head of my machine over to the left edge of my quilt. I'm going to hit the button on the left to begin the measurement. And then I'm going to move over to the right edge of my quilt and I will hit the button on the right. It's measured my quilt to be 24.166 inches. And now I'm going to move to the midpoint of my quilt. I will bring my machine close to what I think is the middle of my quilt. Then I'll hit the black sewing machine. Make sure my needle is up. And now my machine has moved to the midpoint of my quilt based upon the measurement that I put in for the right and the left edge of the quilt. I'm going to apply that measurement so I can use that throughout the process of creating a power panto. Apply measurement. All right, and then we're taking to panto stacker screen. Creating a pantograph in Power Panto is as easy as one, two, three. One, measure your quilt. Two, select a pattern. Three, sew out your pattern. Now I can put in the actual length of my quilt, which is 40 inches. And now I have to tell my machine that I want to be in Power Panto mode. So as you can see, the last time I used my machine, I used the basic mode. So if I select that button, it will open the Panto Stacker mode selection box. So I'm going to choose Power Panto. Now I'm going to select my pattern. I'm going to use this hearts pattern. So I will select it and then select open. So the way my pattern looks right now, I might want to put a little more space between the rows. So I'm going to go to vertical spacing and I'm going to add a little bit more there. And you notice the hearts are starting not to overlap. They're just touching. I want to move them apart just a little bit more. I want a little space between them so that there's a little separation. And the only other thing I might do is maybe play with the horizontal spacing. So if I added more, you can tell that was too much because there is an area right here where the hearts have separated. So I'm going to change that horizontal spacing back to zero actually. And that looks pretty good. Before we leave this screen and begin sewing on our pantograph, I'd like to point out a couple other features on this page. They're not necessary in order for you to stitch out your pantograph, but they may come in handy later on. In the lower left, show safe area. If I click that, it will show my safe area. In this instance, I have magnified my screen view 
so you can't see the top and bottom of the safe area. If I go to my magnifying button and hit fit, then you're able to see where my safe area is. I'm going to magnify this again. It's just easier for me to see that way. And I will X out of that and I will turn off show safe area. Below that is sew through clipped. I like to have that checked because all along the side of your quilt, part of your pattern is clipped off. You don't have a complete heart over here, but having that sew through clipped selected allows the computer to tell the machine to connect each of these lines. So you will have continuous line sewing back and forth. So it will connect these patterns by stitching from one pattern or one row to the next. So it's continuous and you don't have to stop between each row. Okay. The next thing is pattern fitting. This is horizontal fitting and this is vertical fitting. Essentially what it does is stretch your pattern horizontally or vertically. You can toggle between the two, but you can never have the both on at the same time. Over here, we have other buttons that will change the look of your pattern. It really comes into play when you have a directional pattern where everything is going to the right or looking to the right, and then you flip it where everything is going to the left. Because the heart pattern that I have is not directional, it won't make that much difference. It will allow you to see other patterns and you may find them interesting. So all of these buttons can be toggled on and off. And then at the end, if you don't like what you see, hit the flip X button and it will take you back to your original pattern. Let's try this first one. So it flips the hearts right to left or left to right and then back again. And this one flips every other row. It creates some very interesting designs. Not necessarily what I want, but they're interesting to look at. Well, that's kind of interesting. And then in the end, if I wanna go back to the pattern that I had designed, I'm gonna hit flip X. Now I'm back to the original pattern that I want to sew. One of the other things up here, resume zone sewing session. Say for example, I decide I'm not going to finish my pattern tonight. I, I'm going to go to bed. So when I get up tomorrow and I want to continue, I will hit resume zone sewing session, which will allow me to get back to where I left off. Okay. Now let's go to sewing zones. The first thing you're going to be asked is, would you like to save your zone sewing session? I always say yes. Just in case something happens, I still want to be able to get back to the pattern that I created and be able to continue to stitch it out. Now, this is going to save your pattern in one of the folders called zone projects. And notice the extension for those patterns is .zp. F. And we're used to seeing .gpf prior to QCT5. ZPF files saved in the Zone Projects folder can only be opened up using the Resume Zone Sewing Session. Okay, so let's call this Hearts. and hit save. Okay, then it takes us to our quilting interface. So the first thing you have to do when you get here is of course, set your pattern. And notice that I'm in zone one, but there's some other things on this page that you might be interested in. Zone manager for one, if I click there, opening the zone manager allows you to select certain things. Well, that's what I wanna do. First thing you notice is it's showing your entire pattern again. I have in the upper left clicked show zones. So it's going to show me how many zones I have to sew before I can complete my project. I can click on each one.
first zone, second, third, fourth, and fifth, or I can scroll through my zone numbers by using the arrows. Four, three, two, one, etc. It also lets me know that my zone scale is going to be 100% all the time, but the height, I can only use 90%. I have to allow 10% for my quilt rolling up on the rail because I have to take into account that as my quilt rolls up on the rail, it's going to be taking up more and more quilting space, whether or not I have a king size quilt or a baby quilt. Okay. And just below here, zone size. This was the maximum that I set in 36. Um, even though I said 14, it tells me 12.6 that describes the maximum amount of sewing space that I will have at any one time. Okay. Now, over here, these are the zone preferences. And the way I originally set up my quilt, I want to go to the center point placement each time I advance my quilt. I could go to the upper left or the upper right, but I do like the center point placement. And there's a question mark over here that if you click on it, it will explain to you what that is. I'm going to leave it right here. There's a toggle switch. I can change it to four point placement or center point placement. And that's where I like to leave it. The second box, zone start position. You can alternate between starting on the left and going to the right. Again, there's a question mark here that if you click on it, it will give you a better explanation. If I toggle to the first box, I'm going to start on the left, go to the right. Then I'm going to come back and start on the left again and go to the right. I like to start on the left, come down to the next row, and go back to the left. Okay? And then the sewing direction, I want to be in continuous. So I can toggle through these, and you can see kind of the design. You would go left to right, then left to right, then left to right. Not exactly what I want to do. Now here, you're going from left to right, right to left, and then left to right. This holds true, but only within the zone. But you're stopping after each row. If I hit continuous, I'm going to go left to right, stitch down, right to left, stitch down, left to right. That's continuous. I don't have to stop. Everything just keeps going. So that's the way I like to have mine set up. And I'm going to say okay. Now, let's get to placing our pattern. And when I originally set up my safe area and I told the machine to find the center point of my quilt, I put a little piece of painter's tape there and marked where that center point is. So that's the point I'm going to now. So I'm going to move my machine head to that center point. And then click here, which orients your pattern around that center point. I can trace my pattern so I can see how it's going to stitch out. And just to be sure, I have it placed where I want and that I'm getting some stitching off the edges of each side of my quilt. If I'm satisfied with that, I can pull bobbin. I like to use a single stitch and move away. That pulls me up a little bit of bobbin thread and I move back. Then I have extra thread to pull up. Okay. So I'm pulling my threads to the top of my quilt before I sew. And now we're going to sew. Now we're finished with sewing our first zone. This is the screen that comes up. Finish the zone, proceed to next zone. Before you do that, you have to pull your bobbin. You're pulling your threads up through the top again. Single stitch. Move away, move back. Now I'm going to hit the back button because we're ready to place our next zone. You will see the screen. It says finish zone, proceed to the next zone. We've already pulled bobbin, so we can click right there on finish zone. The software is very good about asking you, have you completed sewing the zone? Yes. 
Now, in order to place our next zone, we are prompted by marking our next zone placement. I like to use a single stitch, and as I said before, I placed a piece of painter's tape right in the middle point of my quilt, so I know each time I advance, I'm going to be moving to the midpoint of my quilt in order to set up for the next zone. I'm going to click there. The machine takes a single stitch at the bottom of your first zone. Once I've done my single stitch for marking my next zone, so I can continue on. Are you sure all of the zone markers have been properly placed? In other words, is my piece of tape there with a single stitch hole in it telling me this is where you need to start the second zone? Yes, it is. The machine will now move to where the fabric marker for the next zone should be positioned. Now that we've marked the quilt for our second zone, we are now able to advance our quilt and say OK. Again, the software is asking you, have you moved your fabric? If you have, touch OK, because it's been positioned correctly underneath your needle to begin zone two. I'm going to hit OK. I just have to hit the green box. As you can see, your pattern moves, shifts just slightly to be in the correct position. I can pull bobbin, trace, or sew. So let's pull the bobbin again. A single stitch, move away, move back, pull your threads to the top, and sew. Zone is finished. And again, before we can go on to zone three, we have to pull the bobbin. So let's pretend we're really fast and really good at this, and we are now at our last zone. So just to trick the machine, I'm going to go to my zone manager, and I'm going to toggle down to my last zone, would be zone five, and I'm going to say OK. Would I like to be guided in moving my fabric? Sure. The machine will now move to where the fabric marker for the next zone should be positioned. And I've marked my quilt again, and I'm going to move the fabric so that the marker is beneath the sewing machine needle. I'm advancing my quilt. I'm on to my last zone. Okay. Software asked me again, have you moved the fabric? Touch OK. The head of my sewing machine is right here, so I have to hit the green box. Green means go, so I can sew my last zone. My pattern is now positioned. If by some chance, when I get to the bottom of my quilt, I end up with more pattern than I have fabric in the quilt, I can clip the extra pattern off by adjusting the bottom left corner of the zone. So I'll move my machine to the place where I want the pattern to end. And I'll go down to the bottom where you see the three blue triangles, partial triangles with a red line underneath them. And then I'll click there. It shows that the bottom of my pattern has been clipped off. And yes, it is pink like I'm outside of my safe area, but this is the one time when you can do that. And then I just pull my bobbin and then sew. Single stitch, move away, move back, and then sew. We finished our quilt. We kind of did all five rows, but not exactly. I hope that was helpful in showing you how to design in Power Panto. Like I said, as easy as one, two, three. One, take the measurements of your quilt. Two, choose a pattern. And three, sew in zones. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to show you how to create a pantograph using Quilters Creative Touch 5.
I'm going to show you how to create a pantograph using Quilter's Creative Touch QCT button. Blah, blah, blah. I hope I was able to explain how to create a pantograph using Power Panto. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. God bless.